Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's On Shape step-by-step -step tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a sheet metal challenge. So I'm very excited to get into this. This challenge comes from the Too Tall Toby playlist called Practice Models. You can see here that we've got a lot of different practice models to challenge you in the world of 3D CAD. But for today, we're gonna take a look at a sheet metal challenge. So let's start the clock here and see how long it takes us to complete this challenge. Now, as always, what I recommend you do whenever you're taking one of these challenges is just start out by looking at the 2D print and kind of coming up with a game plan. I think in the case of this model, I'm gonna use the on shape functionality that allows me to sketch two lines in my first sketch and then immediately extrude them as sheet metal with the sheet metal bend features. And I only really need to create half of this model because the model has symmetry. We can see here we've got center line symmetry. So I only need to create half the model. So my very first sketch will be these two lines and I'll extrude them out along this direction. Then I think my second sketch is gonna be well, really, it won't be a sketch. It'll just be a feature. I'll just pick this sharp edge that I create in the first feature and create a flange sticking out here at four inches. Then for my third feature, what I'll do is I will cut away this kind of triangular shape. And then I'll finish off the model by creating this final flange here, this little smaller rectangular flange that's sticking out, adding some fillets and then going through and adding the cuts. So as always, it's a great idea to kind of come up with a game plan before you get started with one of these challenges. I know it took kind of a, a little bit of time, took about a minute to come up with that game plan, but it's really a good practice and it'll help save you a lot of time in the long run. So let's create a new document here. We're gonna create a new document. We're gonna call this document 21-03-02 angle 2021. This is a public document. So anytime you get logged into Onshape, you can search for this document and actually see the feature tree and see how I built this thing. And now I'm going to go into my workspace units and set the workspace units to inches and to pounds because this is a challenge in IPS or inch pound seconds. So we're gonna be working in inches here and we're gonna start out with a sketch on the right plane. So if you're brand new to sheet metal, well, you should be able more or less to follow along with this tutorial. And so I'm gonna start out on the right plane and I'm gonna start out by creating a line here which comes right to the origin and has a length of one inch. And then I'm gonna create a second line which goes up in this direction with a length of four inches. And once I have those two lines sketched, I'm gonna exit my sketch and I'm gonna jump into the sheet metal command, sheet metal model, the very first sheet metal command. Now here at the top, we've got three options, convert, extrude, thicken. We're gonna use this middle option here for extrude, and then we're gonna pick these two sketch lines that we created, and we're happy to see that Onshape is able to immediately turn that into an extruded sheet metal flange. Now, as far as our options and settings go, well, one of the first options you're gonna see here is what is the depth of this extrusion? And per the drawing, this is gonna be 3.75 divided by two, since we're only doing half of the model. The next options you're gonna see here are gonna be your options for the wall thickness and for the bend radius. Now, just generally speaking in sheet metal, you never want your wall thickness to be greater than your bend radius. The bend radius should always be greater than the wall thickness. And so in the case of our drawing, we're being told that the default wall thickness is 0 0.125 and the default bend radius is 0 0.250. The bend radius is larger than the wall thickness and that is a good thing. That is what we want in sheet metal. Finally, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a look at the uh, sheet metal material direction. That sheet metal material direction is found right here next to thickness. And you can see that that material could be going to the outside or could be going to the inside of our sketch geometry. And in this case, we want it to be going to the inside of our sketch geometry. The last thing that I wanna point out to you is here in the section for relief, there's an option down here for your bend relief type. And we're gonna set that to tear. Now, this last piece of advice that I'm gonna give you here is not advice for all sheet metal scenarios, but it is advice for any of the Too Tall Toby practice models challenges you do. You're gonna to wanna to set this to tear for all of those Too Tall Toby challenges. I think that's gonna give you the best results and it's gonna allow you to quickly create these models. So again, this isn't advice for, uh, you know, across the board, the world of sheet metal, but definitely for all the Too Tall Toby related challenges, set that to tear and you should be in the right direction. 
So we're gonna hit the green check mark here and now we're gonna move on to the next feature. And that next feature is gonna be what's called an edge flange or a flange in on-shape sheet metal. Now to perform this flange, all I need to do is select this edge here on the model and then go into the sheet metal command flange. And you can see that on shape immediately gives me a preview of what that flange is going to look like. Well, once again, I wanna set the distance for that flange. And when I look at the drawing, I can see that that distance is supposed to be four inches. So there we go, that looks pretty good. And now what I need to examine is what's called the flange location or the flange alignment. And you can see here that the flange can be aligned using the option for inner, the option for outer, the option for middle, or a brand new option just added this week, the option for hold line. So we set that option to hold line, we set the depth to blind four inches, this all looks good. We hit the check mark and there we go, we've created our second flange. So now we're going to begin a new sketch on this surface and sketch that triangular geometry to cut away from this flange. And so I'll start by creating a line and then creating a second line at an angle. And then I'm gonna come back and touch this endpoint and come off with an arc tangent to that angle line. And now I'm gonna close off this triangular shape and then I'm gonna put a window or a, really a crossing through that curve and that vertical line. And then I'll press T on my keyboard and that adds a tangent relationship between this arc and this vertical line here. So now I'm ready to add some dimensions. I'll add a dimension here with a value of one inch. I will add an angle dimension here with a value of 37 degrees. And I'll add a distance dimension from here to here with a value of 0 0.375. And now we're ready to jump into an extrude command. We're gonna use the option for remove and the depth of that will be up to next. And that is looking pretty darn good. Now, one of the things that I really like about sheet metal in Onshape is that we can always come over here to the sheet metal table view and examine what this thing is gonna look like in the flat. And that's just kind of a good sanity check to make sure that everything looks the way you would expect it to look. And it does. So let's move on to our next flange command. So once again, I'm gonna pick this lower edge of the model. I'm gonna pick flange here. And we can see that once again, Onshape is gonna be giving us a flange immediately kind of coming off of that existing material. I'm gonna set this option to hold line and whoop, our preview went away. And why is the preview going away? It's going away because that newly created flange would intersect or interfere with the previous flange that we created. So we need to use this option down here, this option for partial flange. So we click that option for partial flange, and now we see that we can create this flange coming off at a distance from this edge over here. Well, the drawing is giving us a distance from this face here. So I'm gonna say that I want that flange end condition to be up to entity with offset. And then I'm gonna choose this entity, and then I'm gonna input an offset of two inches based on the dimensions on the print. And now this is all looking pretty good. The final thing I need to input here is the blind distance. And again, per the print, that looks to be 1.5 inches. There we go, that looks awesome. That looks just like the print. And so now I can hit the green check mark and move on to my final features, which are gonna be the cut extrudes and the fillets. So here I will select this face, begin a sketch. I will create a sketch of a circle here. And this circle has a diameter of 0.5 inches. It's got a distance location from this front edge of the model here at a distance of um, one inch. And then it's got a distance across the entire model. So I could begin a line command here and pick up on the origin. And then I can press the letter Q to turn that line into a construction line. And the reason that's valuable is because now I can create a dimension from the center of that hole to the construction line and actually cross over that center line and type in the value of 2.5, just so that I'm matching a little more accurately with the print. I could also have done a half dimension like I did earlier in the model, but I sometimes like doing that double dimension just so that I'm you know kind of matching up with what's on the print so we'll do a cut extrude of that hole and uh, now we can do another hole here on this face this is going to be a hole along this centered line with a diameter of 2.5 inches and a distance from the top of the model down to that hole that distance is going to be two inches and we're going to take that geometry and do a cut extrude or a remove this time it's going to go up to face so i'll pick this rear face here 
And there we go. That's looking pretty good. Let's jump into our fillet command. And our fillet is going to have a radius of 0 0.25. And that'll be applied on this edge, on this edge, and on this edge. And now we will finish this whole thing off by clicking the mirror command, choosing this as our body to mirror, choosing this as our mirror plane, and then finishing up by making sure that we're choosing to add this material so that we don't end up with two separate sheet metal bodies, but instead one single merged sheet metal body. So we hit the green check mark, and there we go. That looks pretty darn good. That looks like what we were hoping for from the print. We can uh, come over here and look at our sheet metal table and flat view. And look at that. That looks exactly like what I was expecting from the flat pattern. Sometimes you'll, you'll have a flat pattern on the print. So you can use that as kind of a sanity check as well. But the ultimate check here is for us to assign a material. That material is going to come from the Too Tall Toby custom library. And it's going to be 1060 aluminum alloy. And then to perform a mass properties and take a look at this mass here, 0 0.472 pounds. So we can see here that on the challenge, our time is 11 minutes and 24 seconds. And so now we're going to move to the very end of this challenge, kind of move the time bar over and look at that 0 0.472 pounds. So we got it correct. Now what we would do is go down here into the comments and we could say, got it in. 1142 using on shape free and we can add that comment so that all of our friends down here in the comments can see how fast we did it and that is your step-by-step -step tutorial let me know down in the in the comments if you have any questions or any concerns of course be sure to like this video be sure to subscribe and be sure to come back for some more great on shape step-by-step -step tutorials